All right, everybody. So today I'm going to be starting on the tutorial for the five inch pie gear. This is the case. One thing you want to do uh, before you start building is to inspect your print. This is a uh, more or less just an example print here. Um, and make sure all of your holes, the center taps are uh, clear. If they're not, you can use a small, a uh, very small tip screwdriver and try and ream them out a little bit if need be. Um, same thing for this one. When I did this one in ABS, I actually had to add in this point and uh, this point over here because the edges were curling up. If you, uh, if you hold it tight like this, looks all right, but if you pinch it just in the middle, see how it's nice and raised in the corners? Well, the previous two points were there and there was still a gap on the sides. So now we've got the, the nice pinch points here. This is gonna be for our power switch. This little uh, area here is gonna make the HDMI and the audio port available. Obviously, that's where your analog goes. D-pad, your other buttons, start select. These uh, brackets here are for a single battery for now, for right here. I put this one in here. Um, I don't know if there's really enough space with the wiring to put it in there. The little holes are for your speakers. But like any good project, you should probably make sure you got everything you need. Um, I'll have all the links that I can provide in the description here. Uh, I believe these are the four millimeter, um, tactile buttons and these are 12 millimeter. Now these guys actually come with a, uh, a key cap. So they've got this funky little, let's see if I put my finger behind it. See the funky little square thing on the top. That goes with these buttons. So you can choose whatever color you want for your particular project. And of course, you're gonna want uh, helping hands. <laughs> awesome, awesome tools for like 12 bucks. Solder, when I buy my teensies, I buy the, the header separately, because I can get like a hundred of them for a dollar or something like that. Your, uh, if you choose to have a custom thumbstick, if not, that's the the standard standard one that you get from uh, from Adafruit. A lot of these parts are from Adafruit. Your start select buttons, D pad. This project uses two of the. Two of the, um, are they 20 millimeter? I believe they're 20 millimeter speakers. These are pretty cheap, about $1.50 each. Of course, your Raspberry Pi, obviously. This is one of the uh, Power Boost 1000s, the audio amp. And uh, one of the things that helps the magic happen, the Teensy. I don't have the micro USB cable in the room, but. It's just like that, but a one foot version, you know, just regular micro USB cable. And these are number four and number two. I think the two are 256. I forgot what the fours are. I think they're 432. And of course your uh, little soldering iron holder. And um, these are the printed circuit boards. One of the things that's worthy of mention even early on here is that uh, normally the silk screen indicates the side of the board that you put the, the buttons on or whatever. We're actually going to be putting them on the other side of the board. Okay. Buttons on the bottom and the teensy is going to go that row, uh, a row of headers is going to go in and then the teensy is going to sit on top of that. This row here is going to jump, uh, jump her off using, um, ribbon cable to the smaller 
smaller button boards. These ones are already soldered on. That's your start and select right there. That's your, uh, that's your D-pad. Now, if you want to, you can solder most of the, this board has to go in a certain way, but this one you can put in uh, however you feel, basically, as long as you follow the ground. The ground has the square on it. Let me see if I can get it to focus on this. There we go. See the little square by my thumbnail? That's the ground, okay? Same thing on this board. There's a ground here and a ground here. Okay. Um, as for soldering, if you're not familiar with soldering, I guess I'll throw in a quick little lesson, but the trick is to be quick. A um, little bit of heat and fast hands. As I go along, I'm going to try and share some tips and possibly even some tricks as I go along. Um, one of the things that I wanted to mention was, uh, I, <laughs> of course, I didn't put one in here, but uh, see where the screws are sticking out a little bit? Those are the mounting uh, holes for, or not mounting holes, but the through holes from the back cover. And it's a good idea to put the screws in there um, at least once so that there's already a thread tapped because you're using the screw to tap uh, the hole realistically. And these are just a little bit um, oversized. So you're really just pushing the screw through the through the back and into the existing holes. So you want there to be a little um, tap in there already. When you're putting in your screws, um, do them a little bit at a time because they're actually a hair um, out in the design. Uh, so that way as you tighten them down, it's, it balances or straightens itself out. Um, if you notice on this model, there's actually a backlight switch. That's up to you whether you want to have that off or on. But the next step would be, uh, just for visualization purposes, you're going to line up the pie on that end because when you tip it up, you'll see that your HDMI uh, coupler is just going to slide right in there. Sorry if there's not enough light to see this really good, but it just snaps into place. Okay. And now you can start to visualize some of your components. I didn't solder these on yet, but uh, that's going to be your board that goes right here. The teensy is going to sit on top with the USB facing this way. And this board is going to be right here. And obviously this is for your analog stick and your start and select are going to go down here. Uh, a couple things to note about this APS print. For some reason around the, the buttonholes, it was so tight that I can barely get them in there. These are not even pressable at the moment. I'm going to have to take some sandpaper and uh, smooth out the edges or perhaps even a, a drill bit just slightly larger. The reason that I was putting them in there was to stress the fact that you should be able to put all your buttons in and they should be able to move freely and check to make sure that they line up with their holes, those four holes on the back. So one of the reasons that I chose ABS now over PLA um, was that I can get this nice mirror finish on there. Now this haze you see is from the, what they call ABS juice. Um, it's ABS dissolved in acetone. And what I do like is on this one, I can screw in every piece as far as it goes. And uh, everything actually works and clicks um, right away. Now I've just done this as something you might call a dry fit. Um, I just put a couple screws on that side just to hold it in because that's going to be the first piece to come back out um, to get soldered because we got to solder the, the headers on here and then the ribbon cable jumping from there to here and there to there 
and then these are going to come down and across the front back over to the uh, the other side of the the teensy now there's not a lot of do or die moments in this build but this is a this is definitely one of them because once you solder this together that's it it's not coming back apart so I highly recommend program your teensy first and if you're like me and you use uh, the headers that aren't all stuck together sandwich it all together and clamp it in your uh, clamp it together with your um, your helping hands solder the back side first because at that point you can still take the teensy off and you know some possibilities so now that we got this side done now we're going to do some of the uh, joystick uh, connections and thanks to some of the guys from the RetroPie Retro Pie Facebook groups, uh, Steve Sherrod and some others, um, we're going to add in a couple more wires than usual um, for battery detection. So I hooked this up to the PC and got some expected results after uh, running the Arduino program. And uh, this one is set up to actually flash the light. Let me know that it has accepted the code uh, properly. And next we're going to move on to soldering some of our headers in. Myself, I like using this ribbon cable. And uh, I use my fingernails to split them apart. One of the things worthy of mentioning uh, about soldering is tinning your leads. It's where you apply a small amount of solder to the wires. I'm trying to show you in this picture here. I think it's showing up okay. And as you can see, um, I did a pretty ugly stripping job on these, but it's going to be okay because of the ribbon cable. That's why I like it so much. Once we straighten these out and stick them in the holes, um, it'll be okay as long as I have enough to go in all these holes here. Now I like doing these through hole for a couple of reasons. Um, the first is it's just a better soldering job. Uh, a better end result, I suppose I should say. It's a little bit tedious to do it this way, but um, like I said, I prefer the uh, I prefer the end result this way. You wouldn't be able to tell from looking at the <laughs> way I'm doing this that I've been soldering for many years. Just go one at a time, get them all in there. Of course. The last one is being problematic, but there we go. We should have at least a little bit of wire in every hole. So what I do from here is I basically uh, just clamp it in the um, helping hands just like that. Make sure you get that little bit of cable in there and that way now you can solder all those points at once I guess maybe I'll even try and show try and show me soldering can I zoom oh oh wow <laughs> and it's probably gonna be a little bit grainy but I figured I'd do this for a little bit of a soldering lesson. You want to put your tip on there only for a second and also uh, always clean the tip of your soldering iron using the um, little sponge. See how I got a big old glob of solder on the end of mine? Clean that off if you can. It's not always possible. But from there Try and show you how quick this should be.
At least one of those is pretty ugly. And I would definitely want to uh, trim it up a little bit. Let's zoom back out here for a moment. It's really tough to see in the with the camera and this kind of light. If I had better lighting, perhaps. But if you could see, there's a round little bead of solder around all of them. And uh, with the ribbon cable, a couple of these are going to stick out just a little bit, partly because we didn't peel them that far back. But now you got um, the section done. And I, uh, whenever I put it in, I actually fold it like this too. Okay. So we're going to stick this in. But you're going to measure your wire to here and cut a couple of pieces uh, so that your piece goes here and then it continues on and goes over here. And the analog is going to be by itself. There's going to be four wires coming off the analog and uh, they're going to go to this side here. Had I done this the smart way just a moment ago, <laughs> I would have put it into the case that's populated with all the pieces so far. Um, so you've got your, your one row soldered on and folded over. Now remember that this square right here, the very bottom one, is your ground. So as long as you have that going to this ground, the, uh, the squares on the top on this one, and over here it's on the left, as long as you have the ground to those, you can actually wire the rest of the buttons pretty much however you want because you're going to assign it in emulation station anyways. All right, so I took this out and perhaps made it a little bit easier. The, uh, the top two connections here, these top two wires, are actually both grounds. I forgot to look at my schematic. But if you look and follow, the way that I did this was uh, these three are just coming straight off the cable. Everything's in a row. Now I started with the first pin in and went flat across to the start buttons. And if you follow straight across even further, I went straight across uh, and did them in, in order across this board here. I know the things being in there makes it more difficult to see that they actually did go straight across, but there should be able to see it now going straight across. Jesus, bad video. Sorry guys. There you go, straight across. So now this is ready to put back in the pie gear.